In response to the racist murder of civil rights leader Medgar Evers in Jackson, Mississippi, and to the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, killing four little girls, Nina Simone released the song, Mississippi Goddamn. Alabama's got me so upset. Tennessee made me lose my rest. Everybody knows about Mississippi Goddamn. Can't you see it? I know you can feel it. It's all in the air. I can't stand the pressure much longer. Somebody say a prayer. Alabama's got me so upset and Governor Wallace has made me lose my rest. Everybody knows about Mississippi Goddamn. Hound dogs on my trail. School children sitting in jail. Black cat cross my path. I think every day is gonna be my last. That was 1964, but that song could have been released last week. On Thursday, August 3rd, six white former Mississippi pigs pled guilty in federal court to 16 felonies. Why? Because on January 24th of this year, these white cops kicked in the door of the home of two black men in Braxton, Mississippi, without a warrant. These pigs called themselves the Goon Squads, according to court documents. They allegedly call themselves the Goon Squad, a group of six white former Mississippi law enforcement officers giving themselves that moniker because of their alleged willingness to use excessive force and not to report. They quickly shackled the two black men, Eddie Terrell Parker, 35 years old, and Michael Corey Jenkins, 32. Now stop right there and think about the terror that every black person feels when cops come at them. Now think of this combined with your very home being invaded. You are shackled, no witnesses. And then for the next 90 minutes, these pigs degrade, brutalize and torture you while you're shackled. These pigs punched and kicked Eddie and Michael repeatedly. They tased them 17 times. They sexually assaulted them. They shoved them on their backs and waterboarded them, pouring eggs, milk, alcohol, grease, chocolate syrup all over their faces. They made us lay down on our back and uh, he came with the pouring milk, you know, in my face. I mean, it was milk coming out of my nose, my mouth, and I just, you know, it was, I've never been, you know, in that position or in that, you know, and I guess felt the way that I felt that night. I mean, as far as uh, not being able to breathe, it was, uh, they were both breathing and uh, trying to you know, keep, from, uh, keep breathing and keep from drowning. They beat Parker and Jenkins with pieces of wood. They beat them with a metal sword. Again, the whole time these men were shackled. Then they forced them to their knees and with guns to their heads threatened to execute them. And after firing multiple rounds into the air, one of these pigs stuck his gun in Michael Jenkins' mouth and pulled the trigger. The bullet tore through Jenkins' tongue, fractured his jaw, came out his neck. I was, he was standing up right here, and I was sideways like this. I was looking up at him like this. That's the reason why I come out the side of my head. If he comes to the back of my head, I probably would have been dead if I wouldn't have been, like, looking at him like this. Somehow he survived. But while Jenkins lay bleeding on the floor, these pigs went out to the porch and concocted a story to cover their tracks. They decided to plant drugs, to steal the surveillance footage from the house, and plant a gun. They took Jenkins to a side room and staged a drug bust over the phone, claiming that Jenkins had reached for a gun when his handcuffs were removed. And then the next day, the Mississippi Bureau of of Investigations issued a press release that parroted all of these lies. So what was the real crime? In the eyes of these pigs, it was two black men on the wrong side of town. You see, Eddie Parker had been living in Braxton to help the owner of the home he was living in, a white woman who was paralyzed, take care of her house. The two had been friends for 20 years. But a white neighbor complained to one of these goon squad pigs that black people were staying with a white woman. And that's all it took. This was a, almost a two-hour controlled 
torture and interrogation session by racist officers. They came in asking both men, were they dating white women? And throughout the course of the uh, torture session, they constantly, all of them were using the word n constantly calling them n and at times monkeys. So after all of this depravity, after all this brutality and torture, it was Michael Jenkins, even as he was fighting for his life in intensive care, who was charged with aggravated assault and possession of a controlled substance. And Eddie Parker was charged with possession of paraphernalia and obstruction of justice. Now here, I want you to ask yourself, not just what kind of sick motherfuckers these pigs were to do this, but what kind of a sick system we live under, where the justice system then puts charges on the victims of this depravity, rather on the police lynch mob that carried out the actual crime. And when Mary Jenkins, Michael's mother, finally reached a deputy sheriff after calling desperately to the hospitals and police looking for her son, when she asked this deputy sheriff when she could see her son, she was told, and I quote, Michael is our property, and we can hold him as long as we want. Like fucking slavery days, he is our property. We can hold him as long as we want. And after all of this, it was not until five months later, June 27th, that the sheriff's deputies involved in this raid were fired or forced to resign. And do I even have to tell you that this was not the first time these pigs carried out this kind of torture? An Associated Press investigation found that several of the pigs involved in this torture were connected to at least four other violent encounters with black men just since 2019. These incidents left two of these men dead and another with injuries. And this is not just Mississippi. Depraved, sexually sadistic, Brutal torture of black men by cops goes on all across this country. Google what was done to Abner Luima in New York City. Google the more than 40 instances of documented torture carried out over years by the Chicago pig John Burge. Torture that extracted forced confessions that contributed to 10 of these men ending up on death row. And then, if you have the stomach for it, keep Googling and you'll find more. This is why it is totally appropriate that the ban Outer National, built on Nina Simone's song to issue America, Goddamn, which we will play at the end of this segment. But what stands out most of all is that the Braxton Goon Squad, like so many pigs before them, had clearly been operating for years, and they clearly felt they had utter impunity for their actions. Why? Because as Bob Avakian, the revolutionary leader, has put it, quote, the role of the police is not to serve and protect the people. It is to serve and protect the system that rules over the people, to enforce the relations of exploitation and oppression, the conditions of poverty, misery, and degradation into which this system has cast people and is determined to keep people in. The law and order the police are about, with all of their brutality and murder, is the law and order that enforces all of this oppression and madness. And all this will continue, and it will only get worse as long as we continue to be forced to live under this system. This is why we need and we demand a whole new way to live, a fundamentally different system. And quoting from the document by that title issued by the Revcoms, we declare and demand the existing capitalist imperialist system and its institutions of government in this country must be abolished and dismantled and replaced by a new socialist system based on the Constitution for the new socialist republic in North America. As we state in this document, under this new system, quote, the role of government institutions established with this new socialist constitution, including the police and military, will no longer be to contain, control, repress, brutalize, murder, and slaughter people here and all over the world. Instead, these radically new institutions will safeguard the rights of the people and give backing to the masses of people in moving to abolish all forms of discrimination and inequality, all relations of oppression and exploitation. They will defend the new, emancipating society against attempts to sabotage, 
attack and destroy it, and will support people throughout the world fighting for the goal of emancipation. We need this revolution. We need it as soon as possible. Get with this revolution and do it today. Slavery hasn't changed. My friend has just adopted a new faith. Thank you.